Hey, it's Mike Chen. It is one of the most common items that you see on an almost daily basis. A deck of cards has become an ubiquitous part of our lives and a cheap way of entertaining ourselves and our friends. I mean, you can spread them across the table to build a house of cards or have your buddies gather for a poker night. The standard 52 deck of playing cards seems mundane to us, but it has, like so many things, quite a story to tell. Each suit and each character on it has its unique tale. So in this video, we're gonna count down the 10 amazing facts about a standard deck of cards. Number 10, the magic number. Ask anyone and they will say that a deck of playing cards should always have 52 cards, but not a lot of people know why. The number 52 actually represents the number of weeks in a single year. And incidentally, the four suits represent the four seasons, not the hotel. The 13 cards in each suit are the 13 weeks in each season. The court or the 12 royals represent the 12 calendar months. And the two red and two black suits are the four different solstices. Also, the four suits represent the four natural elements. Heart is water, club is fire, diamond is earth, and spade is air. Number nine, the odd car out. Check out any deck of playing cards and you will notice that the ace of spades stand out in appearance. Whether it's the imagery on the face of the card or the amount of text accompanying the illustration, or maybe how sparse it looks. It is definitely an odd car out. The reason behind this is that playing cards were a popular form of entertainment in medieval France. And like today, almost anyone from all walks of life has a deck. So in order to exploit its popularity, the French rulers would put a tax on the ace of spades. The card would from then on have open spaces where officials would use to place stamps indicating that a tax has been paid. But these days, the open faces on the ace of spades are used to print information about the manufacturer, trademarks, or any other bits of random information. Number eight, one card short. Due to the tax placed on the ace of spades by the French monarchy, and of course, tax evasion, people would therefore buy their decks and opt out on the ace of spades to avoid that extra charge, so they would always have to play a game with one card short. This is where the phrase, not playing with a full deck originated from. These days, if you say that, it would usually mean that a person is odd or not in their right mind, but back in the day, it would quite literally mean that you are playing with an incomplete deck. Number seven, older than you think. The first recorded use of playing cards was in Asia around the 12th century. While we may associate these cards with the Europeans or even the Middle East, it was in the continent of Asia, more specifically China, that the game was first conceived. Initially, it was played similar to mahjong or dominoes, where players would use bone or ivory tiles as cards. Later on, the Chinese switched it to its paper form that we know of today. Number six, familiar faces. The look and layout of the modern day playing cards owes itself to the French, particularly the courts or the cards with faces. These face cards were named after and designed to look like famous historical monarchs, and they are as follows. The King of Hearts is supposed to be Charlemagne, the King of Diamond is supposed to be Julius Caesar, the King of Spades is supposed to be King David from the Bible, and the King of Club is supposed to be Alexander the Great. The Queens and Jacks were also taken after historical figures. For example, the Queen of Hearts is a representation of a biblical figure named Judith, and the Jack of Club clubs represent Lancelot. Number five, suit up. Across different countries and cultures and over the course of centuries, there have been different variations of the suits to a deck of playing cards. However, it is difficult to pinpoint the exact origins and reasons as to why. On the other hand, suits that are similar to modern day playing cards have appeared as early as the 15th century in China. And these suits, all four of them, represent different amounts of money. In Europe, countries like Italy, Germany, Spain, Switzerland, and many others developed their own form of the suit suits, but it was the French version of the suits with its spades, hearts, clubs, and diamonds that have spread worldwide and are now recognized as a standard in any deck of playing cards. Number four, collector's item. Unlike, say, comic books or cars where there are industry or community standards, card collecting is a popular hobby, but there is no clear market price for any kind of deck. Regardless, people buy different decks from different manufacturers and of different rarity. Speaking of rarity, a mid-15th century 52 deck of tarot cards from the Netherlands was considered to be the rarest and oldest in the world of cards and decks, and it was sold to a private collector in the 1970s with a price tag of $2,800. It now resides in New York's Metropolitan Museum of Art. Number three, coming to America. 
Playing cards arrived on American shores with the British colonists. Since then, they have become quite popular in North America. Centuries after it was introduced, the deck went through several changes in the hands of the Americans. For example, the varnished or high gloss finish on cards was an innovation to ease shuffling. And if you would notice, most playing cards today have rounded edges. This is to prevent them from wear due to constant playing and preventing them from folding up when shuffled. But perhaps the most innovative change done by the Americans was the double-headed court cards that prevented players from turning them right side up during play or dealing. Number two, an ace in the hole. During the Vietnam War, crates upon crates of aces of spades were sent to the American troops. The troops would then wear these aces like badges or scattered them around areas where rebels camped because the general belief was that the Vietnamese rebels were superstitious and associated the ace of spades with bad luck and they allegedly fled at the site. However, the story was later on proved to be a myth. Perhaps a kind of propaganda or psychological warfare done to raise the chances of the American troops of defeating the Vietnamese communists. And finally, number one, the deck that won the war. At the height of the Second World War, the American government would send decks of bicycle brand cars to troops imprisoned in Nazi camps. At first glance, the decks and cars would appear ordinary, but what was amazing about them was that when they became wet, the cars would peel apart to reveal parts of a map. Assembled in a specific way, the 52 card deck would reveal an intricate map that charts out escape routes for the imprisoned American soldiers. So I guess an ordinary deck of cards may not be so ordinary after all. Alright guys, thank you all so much for watching this video. I'll see you later.